Resuming debate, reprise de débat, the Honourable Member for Beaches, East York. Thanks very much, Madam Speaker, and I note that I'll be splitting my time with the member from Charleswood, St. James, Assiniboia. Colleagues, 50 years ago, um, the eminent astronomer Carl Sagan wrote an, an article under the pseudonym Mr. X, uh, and he wrote it about cannabis, noting the illegality of cannabis is outrageous, and saying on legalization specifically, I hope that time isn't too distant. That was 50 years ago. So I'm going to start by commending and recognizing the, the progress that we have made. If you'd asked me five, ten years ago whether I would see cannabis legalized in my lifetime, I would have been incredibly skeptical. And yet, uh, on October, uh, in October of last year, that's exactly what this government did and followed through on a significant promise to treat it as a public health issue, but also really to treat Canadians as the responsible adults that we are. Now, Madam Speaker, I, I, I will support C93. It waives the five-year waiting period. It waives the $631 fee. Uh, the Minister of Border Security and Organized Crime Reduction has noted that as many as 400,000 Canadians have criminal records for the simple possession of cannabis, uh, and, and that is something that we ought to correct as much as possible because we know that the impact of a criminal record uh, can impact one's ability to secure housing, employment, their ability to travel. So yes, I will be supporting C93, but uh, that to me is, is, is obvious and straightforward. Uh, I, I also think, Madam Speaker, that this bill ought to go further, and I hope to see the committee make amendments so that it does. Why do I say that? Well, first, I think Canadians and, and colleagues should understand the difference between a pardon and an expungement. According to the Parole Board of Canada, the purpose of a record suspension or a pardon is to remove barriers to reintegration that can be associated with a criminal record. So the idea is we say you're forgiven, move on with your life. According to the Parole Board with respect to expungement, the government recognizes that the conviction was for an act that should never have been a crime at all uh, and that these individuals should not be viewed as former offenders. Instead, we say we're sorry, we made a mistake, this should never, we should never have done this in the first place. And with respect to cannabis possession, we're not talking about trafficking, with, with respect to cannabis possession, uh, Madam Speaker, I, I think it is straightforward that we never should have made this a crime in the first place and that expungement is the proper answer. Now, the government has made technical arguments with respect to travel. I trust that the committee will, will address those. Uh, there is no difference at the American border with respect to a pardon or an expungement. In the hands of the American officers, they enforce their laws as they see fit. We, Madam Speaker, should be concerned with our domestic laws. And I'll say this, if we can help anyone move forward with their lives in a more significant way, an expungement will help Canadians do that who are impacted by criminal records more so than a pardon. If we can do that at all, we should seize this opportunity. And again, just a, a clarifying note on the difference between a pardon and an expungement, which really hits home when you see uh, the great differences between governments. And we see this in Ontario right now, where the, the, the pendulum swings so incredibly uh, hard in the opposite direction. Uh, a different government, a different government could actually restore records when they've been pardoned. They are simply set aside. Uh, a, a, a different government could never restore criminal records if they've been properly deleted through the expungement process. I also want to say, Madam Speaker, that uh, it's, uh, I, and, I, and I commend the member from Victoria for putting C-415 for, forward, but I would also note that this is grassroots liberal policy, and, and I'm going to read now from uh, 2012 Liberal Biennial Convention put forward by the Young Liberals of Canada, supported by over 80 percent of grassroots liberals at the time, back in 2012, noting that, be it further resolved, that a new Liberal government will extend amnesty to all Canadians previously convicted of simple and minimal marijuana possession and ensure the elimination of all criminal records related thereto. So if we want to be consistent with our legalization promise that tracks back to this resolution, Madam Speaker, amnesty is the answer. Now, most significantly, it's not, uh, I'm not suggesting the most important argument is because it's supported by the Liberal grassroots. The most important argument is because we have to correct an injustice, Madam Speaker. The criminalization of cannabis was a racial injustice in original purpose and current effect. I want to quote, uh, it's not, it's not a, a positive quote, it's an offensive quote, uh, but this is a direct quote from Harry Anslinger, America's first drug star, who warned that reefer makes darkies think they're as good as white men. Here in Canada, Emily Murphy, one of the famous five, Emily Murphy, an otherwise celebrated women's rights activist, led a temperance movement grounded in the belief that aliens of color use drugs to corrupt the white race. Now, if we look at the modern application 
of these laws. We see a Toronto Star investigation from 2012, 2017 that found black people with no criminal record were three times more likely to be arrested for cannabis than white people. That's 2017. Now, there was a vice investigation subsequently uh, made access to information uh, requests of police agencies across the country, and, and they found, for example, in Regina, indigenous people represented 41% of cannabis arrests in 2015 and 2016, but only 9.3% of the total population. When we see the Federation of Black Canadians and the Black Lawyers Associ Association stand up in support of going further for amnesty, they're doing so because it was a racial injustice. Now, the government argues that the injustice was in the application of the law, it wasn't inherent in the law. But for anyone who understands how we, we interpret our constitutional law and how we might find a law unconstitutional, yes, we consider the purpose of the law, but we also consider the effect of the law. And so too, with respect to expungement, it's, it's not only if it's inherently an injustice, but also if it's an applied injustice. And I, I would also note that it is arguable, it is arguable whether uh, the original purpose, as I've noted, uh, uh, should ought, ought not to be considered as well when we talk about the injustice. And, and I, I would argue that this was inherently an, an injustice. When, when I read the Ladane Commission in 1970, there can be no doubt that Canada's drug laws for, were for a long time primarily associated in the minds of its legislators and the public with general attitudes and policy towards persons of Asiatic origin. So what, the point is this, Madam Speaker. We fear different drugs today because we used to fear different people. Now, the last point I want to make is that if you, if you set aside the most important arguments with respect to racial injustice and, and you just consider basic common sense, Half of Canadians, almost half of Canadians, self-report using cannabis in their lifetime. Are half of Canadians criminals? When cannabis is less harmful than the six-pack that you take to a party or, or a Mickey of vodka, are, are people who possess cannabis, and again, not traffickers, but people who possess cannabis, should they ever be thought of as criminals? And if the answer is no, I think the obvious answer is no, in the same way I don't think if you take a six-pack with you to a party that you are a criminal, to take a less harmful substance, you also ought not to be considered a criminal, and we as legislators should cure that. We have the capacity to cure that. We can cure that simply by improving the law before us. The, the simple question that we all have to answer is the conduct in question deserving of a criminal record. And I think demonstrably the answer is no. Never should have been illegal in the first place. I support C93 for moving in the right direction, but we should do what is right when we have the opportunity. We should correct this injustice. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Questions and comments? Questions and commentaries? The Honourable Member for